the tax year end is fast approaching, so now's a great time to get your business ready. Stay tuned for tips that I have learned over 20 years of advising clients. Hi, I'm Janelle Bartlett. I'm a chartered accountant and founder at Accountants to Business. If you're looking for honest, legal ways to manage your tax, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to list some of the deductions that you might be entitled to. And if you are entitled to these, it's really important that you don't miss out. Obviously, I don't know your individual circumstances, so if any of these appeal to you, please follow up with your own accountant to see if they're right for you. Let's start by looking at asset purchases and the temporary full expensing provisions. Now, there's a lot of terminology around what most people would call depreciation, and temporary full expensing is one of those terms. It means that under some circumstances, you can claim a tax deduction for 100% of the cost of the asset, and there's no limit on the amount of the asset that can be claimed. So here we're looking at businesses with a turnover of under $50 million, and that's most of us. Assets that qualify include secondhand assets. They include improvements, and even improvements to assets that were purchased prior to the start of these provisions. Ineligible assets include motor vehicles that cost over 60,733. So the amount over that 60,733 is not claimable. Private portion is also not claimable. Say for example, you have a 50% logbook and you purchase a motor vehicle that costs 70,733. The claim under temporary full expensing would be 60,733 multiplied by your 50% logbook. Capital works are also not claimable under these provisions. An example of capital works is if you have a factory and you install a mezzanine level, that's capital expenditure, and it doesn't qualify for a deduction under this provision. Of course, it does qualify for the normal capital works deduction. Assets that are not in Australia don't qualify. So if you purchase some equipment for your factory in New Zealand and send the equipment to New Zealand, you cannot claim the temporary full expensing. Some primary production expenses are out as well. There's quite a list of them, uh, including fodder storage. Non-business assets are also out. That's things like a rental property is not considered a business asset. Collectibles are not a business asset. We also have to be careful about asset structures here. This is where we hold assets in one structure and we lease them to another structure. So typically the business will operate from one structure and for asset protection purposes, we'll have assets um, held in another structure and they're leased across. We have to be careful about that. The ATO has said that where the assets are held in a company, that it's very likely that, and they will accept that that structure is in business and can claim the temporary full expensing. However, where the assets that are being leased are held by an individual or a trust, it's very difficult to prove that it's in business. Now, I know that seems ridiculous, but uh, that's, that's the ATO approach. Business travel is a, a good one to look at. So even if you pay now and travel later, um, so you might travel after the 30th of June, but pay for the travel before. Don't get too carried away. Unusual claims can be a problem. Stay to the end of the video and I'll explain how the ATO approaches these things. You can pay some expenses like rent and interest in advance. You can generally pay up to 13 months in advance, but don't pay for things like stock or packaging as this works differently and it's likely to not be a deduction. Don't forget to write off your obsolete stock. You may need a valuation. It's a very good idea to get a letter or some documentation from your supplier to support the value for your obsolete stock. And of course, don't forget to do a stock take at the 30th of June. And write off your bad debts, and that must be done before the 30th of June. So don't wait till your accountant does that for you. It really must be done before the 30th of June. In order to call a debt bad debt, and in order to be able to write that off, you must have taken reasonable steps to recover it. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have gone to court, but you do need to have taken some reasonable steps. It might be that you referred it to a collection agent and then decided it's not a commercial 
um, reality to collect it. Purchase deductible clothing before the 30th of June. So that includes protective clothing and qualifying uniforms. Now again, clothing claims are really complex. Um, the list of things that are in and out is quite long. We do have a tax saving toolkit and clothing is addressed in detail in that. The link is in the description below the video. So don't forget to get it, it's a completely free copy and uh, just get that, it's quite a, quite a useful thing. If you do provide gifts to your staff, the end of financial year can be a good time to do that. Just remember that to be fringe benefits tax exempt, the gift must be under $300, infrequent and not entertainment. So the sorts of things that do qualify are gift baskets, flowers, alcohol in a sealed bottle, must be sealed, and things like Coles Meyer vouchers or Woolworths vouchers. They're all fine, they do qualify as fringe benefits tax exempt. The things you want to avoid are things like movie vouchers and restaurant vouchers. So these attract fringe benefits tax and that makes them a very expensive way to go. Pay your staff bonuses before the 30th of June. Just make a note of your pay dates. I think this year, the financial year finishes June 30 is a Thursday. So if you're doing a pay run on the Friday after June 30, and you put the bonus in that run, it's going to be picked up in the following year. So make sure you pay it in the pay run that is posted and paid before the 30th of June. There is a way to pick up that unpaid wages, uh, but it is a lot easier if you just make sure that the bonus is paid in the pay run prior to the 30th of June. Donations, make sure they're paid before the 30th of June. Uh, the charities will be um, certainly reminding us of that. A note on wages to spouse and children. Just remember these must be at commercial rates and for time actually worked. Staff super, pay that before the 25th of June. Now, in order for superannuation to be deductible, it needs to be paid and the super fund needs to have received it before the 30th of June. So a good rule of thumb is send it off on the 25th. Now the super funds have become a lot more and the payment systems have improved a lot over the years. But just remember the end of June is very busy for these super funds. So make sure that it is paid by the 25th of June. Most of us are in the habit of paying that um, soon after the end of the month or the quarter. And particularly if you're paying super quarterly, it's quite a large amount. So it's really worthwhile jumping in and paying that by the 25th of June. Even if you pay everything except the last week, you, you're really bringing forward that deduction. So pause the video now and uh, go and put a reminder in your phone to do that. So superannuation deductible contributions for individuals are at a maximum of 27,500 for the 2022 year. Now that includes your super guarantee. Note that the bring forward rule applies to super balances under 500,000. It allows you to make top up contributions where you haven't made your maximum contribution in previous years since the 2018-19 year. But just be careful, previous years, the maximum was 25,000. So be very careful with these calculations and check with your accountant. There are many more year end tax matters to consider. I've touched on the, the main topics, the basic topics, but there are lots more. Trust distributions are important and your trust distribution minutes must be completed before the end of June. Company tax is another important consideration, looking at uh, what is might be payable there and also what is your franking account balance? Can we pay a dividend? Dividends, the extent to which we'll pay a dividend might depend on the marginal rates of the people receiving the dividend and whether the company has a franking account. Division 7A loan repayments must be made before the 30th of June. For our clients, we all have strategies in place for those, but uh, if you have those loans, and I have to say, I do not like them, but if you have them, it's really important that they're addressed. It's a good idea to also look at your asset protection at this time of the year. Just look at who holds your shares and your other assets. Substantiation is very important. For all of the expenses that you want to claim, you need to have an invoice or a receipt, but you also need to have proof of payment. 
and a lot of people don't realize that but the ATO wants to see a line on your bank statement or credit card that shows that you have actually paid for the item. Our tax saving toolkit includes a record keeping guide so don't forget to download it. Again the links are in the video description. Our A to B clients will receive their copy in June as usual. I'd like to explain part 4A. Part 4A is a very important part of the tax legislation and it's often overlooked. It effectively says that any tax planning that has the dominant purpose of saving tax is against the law. And that's pretty amazing, but it's something that we need to know. In practice, we really only see ATO activity on part 4A where there is a blatant artificial or contravened arrangement to obtain a tax benefit. And I can honestly say I've never had a part 4A tax audit. So thanks for listening. If you like the video, please um, hit the subscribe button and the like button. We're going to be doing more updates to help you navigate the business tax world. Thank you.